Yo, what's poppin' my people? It's your boy Cooks the Great, aka CTG, and I'm back at you guys. Bro, get up. Yo, what's poppin' my people? It's your big homie Cricks the Great, aka CTG, and I'm back at you guys with another banger of a UFC 5 video. And in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at how an opponent was able to shut down Ed Parker 02's play style. Now, this comes off of the video where Ed Parker was able to shut down Nas UFC, and he pretty much dominated the entire fight against Nas. So I wanted you guys to see that there is a way to counteract the way that Ed Parker does play. And ironically, this was shown in a video that was posted by Marshall Mind. Now you guys see down here, shout out to the homie Marshall. Uh, shout out to his subscribers too, man. These guys are really posting some high level fights, <laughs> defeating some really, really good guys. So uh, Ed Parker is gonna be using Kamaru Usman, which I thought was a really, really weird pick uh, because I've never seen Ed Parker use Kamaru Usman. And uh, his opponent, I believe his guy, this guy's name is like Tala, Tala, Tala something like that. Uh, he's going to be using Bilal Muhammad. So, of course, you guys aren't going to hear Marshall Mind's audio because it's going to get a little bit confusing. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So, all right, here in this matchup, Ed Parker is going to have the striking advantage. He's going to have the power and the speed and the moveset advantage uh, just because Kamaru Usman did some really, really solid work uh, in his title run. So the stats have really carried over to UFC 5. So right here, I want you guys to notice the difference. I'm gonna pause it for just a second. I want you guys to notice the difference right here between Talha's play style and Nas's play style. Nas had a very, he had a very, I'm gonna back up and wait for Ed Parker to move forward where Talha is really just standing in the middle with Ed Parker straight off the rip. And that's really what I, I pointed out in the Nas video is you have to make Ed Parker feel uncomfortable because if you let him get into a rhythm and start to make his reads easier, he's gonna have a lot of success than if you were able to just stand there and really kind of dare him to walk forward and fight you in the pocket. So right here, you see Ed's willing to stand in the center, but Talha is doing a really, really good job of answering every single time Ed Parker throws out a strike and lands on him. Like right there, even though Ed did land on him, you see Talha is not really backing himself up to the fence and letting Ed dictate the pace. The nice calf kick. I like how he's working the lower body. Nice three points combination, but Ed is landing as well. Right there, nice combo into the block by Ed. Ooh, nice jab hook, gets Ed Parker, that's stun. But right here, I wanna pause it because I want you guys to see, actually, I'm gonna let it play. I want you guys to see, look at Ed Parker's movement. It's very, it's not very fluid like you're, like you're used to seeing from Ed. You see, he's having to stop and really kind of throw out a single strike, which Ed primarily does not like to do. And that's all off of Talha really making him feel uncomfortable because Ed never really knows when Talha is gonna stop and plant and rip like he does right there or if he's gonna go high-low. So right there, beautifully timed combination. Do you see Ed's just eating it? A nice slip uppercut into a slip hook. It's nasty. That was absolutely nasty by Taha right there. He set Ed Parker up with the little offbeat slip and was able to get that knockdown with a nicely timed slip counter. And this is really how you wanna play Ed, man. You wanna get him guessing on what you're doing he's never really getting set and figuring out the timing that Taha is coming with and he's working those calf kicks nicely 
Something that does work against Ed Parker a lot is those calf kicks. And I would know because that's primarily how I fought him. And that's the end of the first round. Now, don't get me wrong. Ed had his moments in that first round, early in that first round. But towards the latter, the middle to the latter half of that round, as you see the beautiful slip hook right there, Taha really started to make those reads, really started to make those adjustments. And you see Ed Parker started to struggle just a little bit. So now Ed is a high level player. So let's see if he's able to adjust and how Taha responds to it. So right there, nice movement, nice calf kick. He's not giving up on those kicks. I like that because Ed Parker does struggle with, with kicks. Nice counter right there, drops him early in the second round and immediately back to that calf kick. The reason why Ed struggles with calf kicks too, ladies and gentlemen, is because he does move his head a lot. So when you are going up against somebody that, uh, that uses a lot of head movements, calf kicks and leg kicks in general will do wonders for you. If nothing else, just to get them to switch stance, maybe into a stance where they're not really as comfortable. So right here you see Taha standing in the pocket, nice jab hook into the lead hook, gets the knockdown again. And now you see Ed Parker's offense has really, really just slowed down. He's second guessing a lot of the stuff that he's doing. And this is really where you start to see guys like Ed Parker, the play style that they like to do start to unravel because they don't understand really what you're trying to do. But right there, he's able to get a knockdown. He doesn't jump on him because his opponent hasn't jumped on him either yet. But you see, Taw's doing a really good job of moving that head. And there's that slip meta. And look at Ed Parker's long-term stamina, too. It's really, really going to start to be a problem. So you see, Ed's trying to regain, regain the dominance in the pace by just pressing forward. Nice jab straight right there by Taha. Ed fires back to try to keep him off of him. But it's not looking good, especially with that chin health on Kamaru Usman. Nice jab hook. There was a really big mistake right there by Taha. No joke, but nice slip counter elbow. Now, I want to pause it because I want you guys to see what's going on here. Although Ed Parker is starting to find a little bit of offense coming back, it's very sporadic. It's not consistent. Elite level players, when they're elite level strikers, they like to have consistency. That's what a large part of us build our game plans around is the consistent damage, the consistent pressure, the consistent success is really what we're looking for. And Ed's not really getting that. He's having a little bit of success and then Taha's coming back and regaining regaining the damage that Ed Parker might have landed on him. And he's still controlling the pace because Ed is landing, but then he's getting countered, which is swaying that momentum back to Taha's, back in Taha's favor. And notice how he's not even grappling. I mean, people with Bilal Muhammad, people that use Bilal Muhammad as a fighter, normally they're looking to set it up, <clears throat> set up strikes or set up grappling with strikes. But Taha's really doing a great job of just using pure stand-up with Bilal Muhammad, which makes this even that much more impressive because this is not an easy thing to do against Ed Parker with a meta fighter, let alone a guy like Bilal Muhammad. So you see right here, Taha's staying patient, but he can't eat those uppercuts. But he, as I say, he can't eat an uppercut. He drops Ed with an uppercut. I don't know what he was doing right there with that head kick. But hey, I'm not in the octagon, man. He's doing a really great job of shutting down Ed Parker. You see, just taking his time. Nice overhand. He's not jumping on Ed. I like the show of respect by both guys. Nice slip straight. Get the job done right there, ladies and gentlemen. And I mean, that's impressive. That is really, really impressive, especially because 
we seen what Nas UFC, what Ed did to Nas UFC. And Nas is one of the best counter fighters in the game. And even he had trouble with Ed Parker. So for Taha to come out and have that kind of performance against Ed Parker and really just shut Ed Parker down for a majority of the fight is super, super impressive. And that's really how you want to do it. That right there is, if you're going to stand up with Ed Parker, is how you have to approach that fight. Because if you don't, Ed Parker is just going to sit back, he's going to pick you apart, and he's going to start to gain momentum slowly but surely while chipping at that body health, and he'll get you up out of there. So, beautiful performance by Taha. I've never heard of this guy, um, but uh, yeah, he definitely put his, his name on the map with that because he, he looked dominant. He damn near dominated Ed Parker, which is a really, really tough thing to do. But with that being said, my people, that is going to be it for the video. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to slap that subscribe button as well as slap that like button. It'd be much appreciated. And let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Do you guys think that other people can replicate this style of play against Ed Parker? Or how would you guys approach it? I want to hear everybody's opinion. It's always interesting uh, for me to see how people's mind work when it comes to uh, UFC 5. How would they approach it? So let me know in the comment section what you guys think of Taha's performance as well as how you guys would approach a fight against Ed Parker. But that's it for the video, guys. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to slap that subscribe button as well as slap that like button. It'd be much appreciated. And until next time, take it easy. Be safe. Enjoy the rest of your guys' day, afternoon, evening, depending on where you guys are watching this from. And I will see you guys in the next video.